This video is brought to you by Crescendo Music Studios. Crescendo, where music takes flight. Hey, learn audio engineering. In this video, you'll learn 10 microphone technique tips for vocalists that apply to both live performances and studio recording. So let's get into it. We'll start by talking about using a handheld dynamic microphone for a live performance. The first tip is the flashlight analogy. So think of a microphone kind of similar to a flashlight, but for sound. A flashlight will illuminate whatever you point it at in a similar way a microphone will pick up whatever you point it at. So you wanna point the microphone at what you wanna amplify. Now most dynamic microphones will feature a cardioid pickup pattern. And this means that the microphone has the most sensitivity at the front and is least sensitive at the back. This isolates the mic from unwanted ambient sound and gives much more resistance to feedback. This makes a cardioid microphone particularly suitable for loud stages. Tip number two is on holding the microphone and specifically to avoid cupping the microphone. When you cup the mic, you change the response pattern of the microphone from cardioid, which only picks up at the front, to omnidirectional, which means that it will be sensitive to all directions. And this will cause the microphone to pick up sound from everything else on stage, which will put you at a greater risk for feedback. It will also make the vocalist sound muffled as the frequency response of the microphone changes and becomes more limited. Now, there are a couple ways that you can control your voice tone when you're using a dynamic microphone. So that brings us to tip number three, which is the proximity effect, which enables you to get a full rich vocal sound. The proximity effect is a phenomenon that causes an increase of low frequency response when you move the microphone closer to the source. The closer you get, the bigger the bass boost. Now this can cause problems, but at the same time it opens up ways to shape your sound. The closer you sing to the microphone, the more full and bass heavy your voice will be, and this is great for singing with an intimate low volume delivery. Wise men say ya. When belting, move the microphone further away to even out the dynamics of the performance. And uh... Moving the microphone further away will thin out the vocal sound, and this is a great technique for background singers, as being further away from the mic will actually make you appear to be in the background supporting the lead vocalist. Number four is on off-axis rejection, and this is how to avoid a thin and muffled sound. So off-axis rejection refers to what happens when sound hits the microphone at an angle instead of straight ahead. Singing across the microphone will sound less present and will color the sound in a way that usually results in less high frequency detail in the voice. This is a useful technique to keep in mind when recording instruments. However, if you wanna keep that rich full vocal tone, it's best to keep the microphone pointed right at your lips. Okay, our last tip for using a dynamic microphone has to do with positioning the microphone and the speakers to avoid feedback during a live sound performance. You always wanna keep the microphone pointed away from the main speakers, and you don't wanna go out into the audience in front of those front of house speakers. This is because whatever's going into the microphone will be coming out of the speakers, and if what comes out of the speakers goes into the microphone, it will also go, go back, back out of the, the speakers, speakers and then and come, come back, back into the, the microphone, microphone. And, then, and you get a feedback loop, which will result in a very shrill, high frequency resonance that uh, is unmistakable and very, very annoying. On larger stages, you will usually have a monitor speaker to help you hear your own performance. Now, it's very important that the monitor be placed directly behind the microphone where the microphone rejects the most sound so that that cardioid pattern can reject all the sound that's coming from the monitor. Now, a moment about our sponsor, Crescendo Music Studios. Crescendo provides holistic music instruction for all ages, from their Music for Young Children program for ages three to seven, to private lessons for teenagers, adults, and seniors. Crescendo hosts weekly band programs like We Jam, giving teenage musicians the experience of playing in a band ensemble and also performing live for the local community. Crescendo hosts a variety of songwriter coffee houses and workshops to enable artists to develop their performance skills and enable them to hone their compositional skills. Crescendo offers lessons in musical theater, digital music production, and a wide variety of instruments. So come take a lesson from myself or any of the other accredited teachers at Crescendo Music Studios, Sherwood Park's premier music education hub. 
Check out the link below to book your free intro lesson today. Okay, so next we're gonna move on to using a condenser microphone in a studio recording. The first tip has to do with microphone setup. You wanna place the microphone at mouth height of the singer so that they can sing directly into the microphone. Now, a quick tip is if you're the one recording a vocalist, an easy way to figure this out is to size up your vocalist with a handshake. Yeah, actually in light of recent events, maybe you should just go in for one of these and take a mental picture of where their mouth lines up to your mouth. Are they taller than you? Are they shorter than you? And use that as a general guide for setting up your microphone. The second thing to keep in mind is the address of your microphone. No, not where it lives, but where it accepts sound from. There are two different varieties, front address and side address. Now, most dynamic microphones are front address, which means that they accept sound from the front, while many condenser microphones are side address, which means that they accept sound from the side of the microphone. Now, if you're unsure which type of microphone you have, make sure to read the manual before recording to prevent a poor recording of an excellent performance. The third tip I have for using a condenser microphone is whenever possible, use a pop filter. A pop filter is an essential tool for avoiding plosives. It diffuses the gusts of air from certain syllables like P and B sounds, p, b, k, r, and is highly recommended when using a condenser microphone. Now, if you don't have a traditional pop filter, there's a DIY version that can be easily made from a pair of pantyhose and a clothes hanger. Simply bend the hanger into some kind of square shape and then stretch the pantyhose over top, hot gluing the edges onto the hanger. And there you go, boom, secure that to your stand and you have a makeshift pop filter. Okay, so number four is to place your microphone upside down if you plan on reading lyrics. This is a really subtle one, but it can make reading lyrics from your phone or a music stand much easier as the mic cable and the neck of the pop filter are not gonna obstruct your view of the lyric sheet. It's a really simple one, but it can make all the difference. And number five, remember that condensers are super sensitive to dynamics and just picking up the room in general. Remember the proximity effect? You can even out the dynamics of your performance by bringing that microphone further away during louder sections of belting. And you can stand a little bit closer for intimate whispering in your ear sound that has more bass with the proximity effect. However, because of that increased sensitivity of the condenser microphones, they are known for capturing more ambient sound of the room, and this can be a bad news if you have a noisy or untreated room. A quick solution is to point the microphone away from the noisiest part of the room, whether that's a window or a furnace or another musician that will be recording at the same time. You can use the microphone's built-in cardioid pattern to focus on the vocalist and reject the surrounding noise. If you found this video helpful or learned something new, share it with a friend who might also benefit from this information. I wanna know which tip did you find most helpful and what other tips do you have for recording a winning vocal performance? Leave your thoughts below in the comments and I'll make sure to follow up with you. Thanks for watching. Check the link below to book your free intro lesson at Crescendo Music Studios and I'll see you guys in the next one. If you'd like to learn more effective strategies for home studio recording, check out my book, How to Record Anything with Clarity and Character. From the basics of digital recording to advanced stereo microphone techniques, this will give you the steps to become an expert of using microphones to capture better takes right at the source. It's available through Amazon where it was a number one bestseller. I mean, no big deal, but I think it's worth checking out. It's essentially everything you'd learn in a university intro to recording class. Great for the home studio musician and anyone interested in the recording arts. Link to that is in the description. To believe in nuts You were scared Unprepared The world gets worse and life can feel so unfair It's easy